Hello everyone. So I hope you have been enjoying all the sessions. So today I'm going to discuss about how you can port your Android application into the BB10 platforms. So it's a pretty simple and uh, some of the exercise I will look at. It. I am a guy, I am a technical guy, so I mostly go through the, some practical steps which will really bring your interest to, to get uh, understand how uh, within short times you can bring your existing Android application into BB10, even not more than 5 minutes, 10 minutes or so. So when I will do the exercise, please calculate timing in your hand. All right? So putting your Android apps to cascade. So let's start with some agenda points. What would we do? Benefits of moving to cascades, the process, available resources, putting your UI, native code, BlackBerry 10 features. So, see, in Android, we know any API labels so in Ben. We are supporting the Gmail onward. And the SDK which we have, it allows you to bring your application which does have a base target till 4.2. So 4.2 is what version? Can anyone say? Yes, API level 17. What is called? Jelly beans. Jelly right. That's right. Thanks. So just a show of hands. How many of you are Android developer? Pretty good. And how many know about BB10 Android runtime? Great. And how many of you have good hands on BlackBerry platforms? BB10. I'm not talking about BBOS. No. <laughs> so here I come. So I will show you some stuff. So before switching to the next slides, what what I would like to directly start from here. Uh, I would like to take you to this slide. It is not fit into the screen, but I may have done. So there is a website called developers.blackberry.com. So when you will go over there, there you will find other So in BB10, we have a multiple platform supports. The first thing is your natives, that is a native slash caskets. So you can do the development in native also and in the caskets. So entire codes you can do by using QML. QML is just like as a declarative language. It's not something so similar you could say in Android. So we have a procedural language support as well as a uh, declarative support language support say, in Android when we are designing the page. So what it will happen in native, especially in BB10, when you write your logic, application logic, that you need to write in CC++, when you need to design, then that you can do via QML. Yep. So this is clear. Then second platform is HTML5 players. So it is no, uh, normally for, uh, it is, mainly for the people, so those who are a uh, web developer. So they have a different architectures there. We have a webbox and uh, in, if you look at the and browse HTML5Test.com, you will find uh, our platforms uh, is having good ranks. We, we are on top. Third one is Android Random. Of course, that is our main agenda, which we are going to cover into this session. And fourth one is Adobe. And uh, yes, apart from these four, we are also fo uh, following uh, and supporting uh, this BBOS platforms. So let's see how it works. So when I have this much options, so th since our agenda is putting Android apps into the cascade, I'll go this Android. And in my session, I will show you some similarity also. How uh, the Android developers will find same similarity kind of experience in BB10, ID, and framework. So I'm just going to ask you uh, uh, basic questions. It's uh, not related to that. What are the stuffs required for doing Android development? Can anyone please say? ID. ID. Your Eclipse ID. Second? Android SDK. Next? Java is also an important Right. Main thing is Java. ADT plugins, right? Then put it the application. But when your application is tested, if you want to upload the application to the, your Google Play market, what do you need? No. Signing is right. So you need to pay for that. But here in BlackBerry platforms, it's not like that. Everything is free. You don't have to pay for anything. 
So here we are also for security reason we are using a signing keys credential. This is very important. So I will show you from where you can get the signing keys and how you can configure. So in Debitan we are three options. There are three ways through that you can convert your Android APK into the bar file. Bar file is nothing that is your build files of Debitan platforms. So it's a pretty easy. How you will do that I will show you step by step. So there are three ways which I have told you already. So what all that? One, the tools which we are having already live available on our cloud. So that link is also there. Second, second is our plugins. So what environment setup you are doing for your Android app development practice. So there itself you will providing your plugins. So when I click repackaging tools. So we have all these three options. One is Eclipse plugin, second is online tools, and third is command line tools. So let's start with the Eclipse plugin, okay? So I have already done the setup. So this is my environment setup, that is Eclipse ID, Indigo, and there I have Android applications. So what I am going to do here, so I will have a plugin, help install new software. I will take you to the website where I have placed this in. So BB10, this is the locations which you have to install in your existing ID. So what it will do, it will allow you to convert your Android applications into the BlackBerry 10 platforms at the same configuration and setup whatever you are using for your Android development. So let's close this. So I have done. So how you will find out whether that plugin is available or not? So when you will right click on the project explorer windows, here you will find this action should be activated, BlackBerry tools, right? So the, apart, along with this, there are some options also will, you will find, add BlackBerry nature to project, remove BlackBerry nature. So if I will click on add BlackBerry nature to project, there some reflection will happen. Whatever you see, these two projects, if you compare here, BlackBerry icons is appearing on top of the project names, right? So I will show you how exactly. So this is the API demos, which I have taken from the 2.3.3, that is gingerbread. See, when I will run this application into the simulator, Android application, right? Look at the logs as well. It came? All right. Now what I am going to do? I will just go BlackBerry tools, right click, add BlackBerry nature to project. Icon got changed. See here. Now, the next task is configure target. So, since my device is already connected, the BlackBerry 10 device is already connected with my laptop. So, it's already there. Else, if it is not connected on the same router point, you can connect your laptop plus your device. It will help you and by auto discover, you can detect that and uh, you are good to put your application into the phone. So, I already connected myself. Okay. Now, what I will do? Simply run as BlackBerry Android launch, right? It is asking me target and asking me the activity which I want to launch here. So let's take API demos and target is my device name. Apply, run. Packaging here, very good. Trunk it. So, configure target. I need to check. So, when you will do this, why I am looking at the device setup, BlackBerry deployment setup wizard? Because it will help you to find out whether your device is properly connected with your laptop or not. 
So there are three channels which I said. One is if you have a simulator, you don't have a device to test their application uh, for VV10, then that you have to do setup. So that all instructions are available on our documentation guidelines. And uh, since my device is connected, the device password I have given. So I will add a step as well. Next, next, and finish. Okay. Clear. Refresh. Run as first again Android application. It's somewhere. Yeah. Remove this, right? Yep, run. Please fix them before running your application. What is the issues? There is no logs. Oh, I'll check here. That's right. This is also fine. Let me try with this. I'll just run a API demos. So we'll see here. Yep, it got launched. Now. If I want to test on the device, uh, yes, run as and BlackBerry launch application. Look at that screen. So here you see. The connected to 169.254.01, that all these details are there. So it's available now? Yeah. So I can, so, so the entire application of API demos, somewhere it went wrong. I think I need to check the logs. So API demos, what do you, it will do? The API demos is nothing, that is the sample of your Android applications uh, which is available inside of your SDK. So when you will run that application into your simulator, you should make sure there are some stages which we have to pass through. So we have a verify APK file, whether your APK, what are the APIs which is using, which have been using inside of the Android application is compatible to BB10 platforms or not. So that all details where you will find, it is available on our documentation guidelines where you will read whether it is compatible with BB10 platforms or not. So that all clear instructions are available already. So since as I said, now we are supporting 4.2, the Zelly Daily one. So most of the APIs are successfully imported. So we have many use cases available is on our store. So that all I will show you later. So this is the one steps which I want to teach you guys and uh, educate you so that you can understand the same. So how long it takes for me? Just I import the existing project and then after I ran into the simulator, I made myself sure whether it is compatible or not what we've done via this one, Blackberry tools. Then if you click on the verify APK, first you build the files, generate the APK files, then verify APK, then configure target, connect your device, and then after you test the application. So this is how it works. You can check all those details into the logs. Now, the other approach. So one has been done. Now the next approach is what? Online, Online tools, right. So what I'll do, I'll just take this itself. I have APK file. Okay, I'll go to the properties. I'll copy this Windows R and Control V. Oh, sorry. Right. 
I have taken this and and put into my desktop. Okay. Now I'll go to the online conversion tool. So what you need to do, you simply need to click on this online tool. Okay. So few of the things is mandatory uh, points which you need to understand very carefully. That I will teach you what all that. So this page will get open. So here I need to provide my details. So why these details? Why my mail ID? You know this details is your BlackBerry ID, which you were using for your signing credentials. When you are filling the form to get the signing keys for BlackBerry ID, that time this credential have been used. So this you have to use. So I will show you uh, how to do that. So let's go to that signing keys first. Uh, understand that stuff. Then that will be helpful for you. So you will not do any mistake. So when uh, you will go to the developer.blackberry.com uh, here. Suppose let's start. This is the main website. Here you have a signing keys on the tab. So when you click on this, you will get similar kind of page. So what you need to do? You have all the options. So simply you need to click on this. You need to provide these all informations. First name, last name, your company email, country where you are. This registration pin. This is very very important. You don't have to miss it because when you will register, the, you uh, fill the form. That registration pin will be required when you will generate the certificates after receiving the signing keys through signing keys, right? For your machine. So for your machine, one certificate will get generated. But if you want to use the same signing keys for multiple, suppose you are working as a team. So in that case, what you will do? You will probably take the backup and share with your friends. So when it will get upload on the stores, that details will be available along with your application. So you could make sure this is my project and you can probably legally shout if someone can to hack it. So I have read this when you check this and submit. Within one hour, you will receive the signing keys. There will be two files with the extension .csj. One is PBDT, another one is RDK file. That all you, you need to uh, copy and uh, paste on your development machine. Now the next part which you have to do, either you can do via ID itself or through here itself. So when uh, Blackberry tools I have this option after installing successfully our uh, Blackberry plugins. When I'll go to configure target, here we have a Blackberry deployment setup wizard. Okay. So this will take you to a step by step process. So where you can set up the signing keys and everything. Okay. If suppose uh, you want to go to that, there will be a signing preference. Suppose you don't have that signing keys ideas so of where I should configure, where I will generate the certificate. So I will teach you how you will do that. Text times. Yep. So signing preference. Here you see the all details. So see, the signing keys which I have received from the Blackberry world, it's already registered to my machine and it's showing the status yes. And uh, all the details, whatever the information, first name, last name, which I have been used for my certificate, that all. I have created the certificates and uh, otherwise. There's a debug tokens. So you need to check that if you are debugging the applications into the VVT device. So for that, debug tokens is required. So here you should go to this like this. Let me start from here. settings, then security and privacy, development mode, and it should be on. Make sure when you are testing the application and debugging your application, it should be on. So here you will find the status. You will get the status, debug tokens installed, author, ran, and it will be valid. So it will be valid normally for one month or more than that. The debug to say. After that, you need to generate another article. It's not mandatory all the times because this is just for testing. If you want to release it, from there directly you can release 
to the blackberry world okay so i am just minimizing this clear any doubt so far uh, one question yep No, exactly not. If you have a simulator, if you have been installed, you know, so, so simulator, all those stuff, the details are available on our documentation guidelines. So you need to install that simulator. Once you do that, all of this, like as I said here, you will find the options. That way, it's a good question. So you have th these three options. Look at here, simulator. So simulator also. So suppose if I switch on my simulator. it will detect that ip address and in simulator you don't need to insert the password that's it so through that you can do it's clear okay so this option so i am not using currently simulators so that's the reason it's not necessary because i connected my phone to my machine so debug technical issue it's not mandatory all the times even in simulator also when you are testing there also it's not necessary and when you have to release that to release process is very simple so this is just given the idea so i have taken this apk file now what i am going to use so signing process is clear to everyone this is very very important because most of the times so what we are having we are doing these sessions and webex and people are understanding all the flows in a high level and missing this important stuff is a basic things if you can understand this clearly then rest all the jobs you can do easily in a short time now we'll go back to the online process here so the details which you have been used in your uh, signing uh, in signing form especially the email id that you need to put over then let's get started so three steps which i said a compatibility check that will verify your apk file whether it is compatible to bvt and platforms or not now set applet permissions count the time Oops! It needed uh, something goes wrong with the system. Till that it get fixed, then I am explaining the command line. So the command line tools, what it do? We have to download the command line tools. So in that, a bunch of the jar files will be available, which will do all the exercises, which will test your. verify your apk file whether it is compatible with bvt and platforms or not then after it will help you to deploy your apk uh, build files the bar files into the device so that all bar files is available for example blackberry deploy then batch bar deploy such kind of jar files are available inside the so that you can explore does it get fix no I really fear by this. Give me a moment. I'm connecting my USB stick. This is always happening into the demo time. 
So I am using my jungles. Thanks for this. So I can now set applicate applet permissions. Don't block. All right. Now we are on the main page where we need to provide our APK files and Android SDK folder. So this is very important. When you are doing this all exercise on the cloud, over the cloud, so your Android SDK should be installed in your machine. This is very, very important. If you will not do ha have that, then you probably may not able to generate the bar files. And signing keys, the another one. So where I kept my APK files? On desktop, accelerometer, yes. <coughs> Here I have taken that. Now in Android SDK location is already, it's by default phased. Start test. So what is going to do? What is doing? Verifying. Right. It's verifying your APK file, whether it is compatible with BB10 platforms or not. So wait for the output. Obviously, network issue is a factor. So I insist don't count the time. You, once you generate the bar files, it will be in your machine. So the command line tools, the bunch of jar files which I suggest, that will help you to deploy your bar files into the BB10. We have another tools also available, third party tools, which you can use for that purpose. If you don't want to go via command lines, there is a tool called DTBP. So that will help you to link up your device and your machine. Through that also you can put the application on the device. It takes time. I don't know what is the latency. No noise. So, in the background it happens, so till that we will discuss some things, important points, like it's built for BlackBerry, what it do. So, built for BlackBerry is our standards, which we are mainly focusing on, and the, the normal Android applications uh, may be not fit for this, but I just want to give you ideas, what is it, uh, what is all about. So, we have three layers, additional layers, apart from the Android uh, runtime, that is Natives, and HTML5, and your Adobe. So when you will make the application in our earlier sessions which Prakash has taken, so there he has discussed about how you could use the boilerplate sample, which is nothing, that is a predefined thing which is available in your plate, through that you can make the application which will get fit and uh, qualify for build for BlackBerry. So it is additional promotional steps, if your apps get qualified, obviously you will get good number of downloads, good number of revenues, everything. So integration is so it's matters, enterprise and consumer. So what kind of application you are referring for? So that is also important. So some similarities when I was discussing about it. Uh, so there are some similarities. Yes, ID is same, a kind of. Uh, when, for Android we are using Eclipse ID, but for VB10 we are having Momentix ID. So how similar the native Android applications and native VB10 application. So that all similarities I will show you later. My <laughs> target to run that, uh, generate the bar files from the online. Um, let's see if it got verified or, yes, it's compatible. So what would be the next? Repackage and submit.
So since my signing keys is already been configured in my working machine, the development machine, I will go for this option. If it is not, then you need to get the signing keys. When you click on it and press on the next button, it will take to you the signing form screen. I already have my signing key, but I haven't configured my computer. So here also you have an options where you can generate the certificates, take the backup, right? So in my case, it's already there. So I am going to click on this and it automatically fills the APK file, Android SD file. Now what is required? Developer certificates. So developer certificates I need, which is with the extension .p12. So that certificates, how you will generate? Through signing keys, So which is very important. So it is a hidden file, but you can find Here I have a .p12 file, right? So I have taken that. And the key store password, the same password which you have been used during the registration form time. All right? And they, for when you will generate the certificate, there you have a flexibility. They, it will ask you, do you want to generate, uh, uh, you, uh, choose another's password? That also you can do. So make sure it should not, you should not go in the wrong end. This is simple step. Sign. So it will come with the option. See, if your all the details are correct and perfect, and then without any problems, it will generate a bar file, and it will also show you the path where your bar file is available, right? So again, it is rely on internet. It take will take some times. So till that, what I'll do, I'll just cover some of the things which is important. So it's a perception, general perception, which we, we have plotted over here on my slides. Normally, people have the interest like this. They want to make the application into the native sites as compared to the website. But we have a, now in the enterprise industry mostly. People who would like to go with the solution called uh, right ones run everywhere. So everyone does that because they don't want to spend enough money and cost on hiring additional resources, skilled resources for specific technology and all. But uh, if you will talk about the performance engineering and uh, other aspect, then you will find native application is always best choice. So as I said, I want to, uh, I will show you some similarity. What observation you are facing, uh, finding in your Android app development, the same kind of experience you will find into your Cascade development. Because in both, you are using declarative language for designing UI. Only the syntax does matter. Because you have a Java in Android, but here we have it. Also, we have a Android development is happening with, by using C, C++ also. So that code you can easily deploy in a seamless manner by, with the help of POSIX. Can anyone say what is POSIX? P O S I X. Kind of. Portable operating system? Right. <laughs> Thanks. So, case studies. So, there are some case studies which we have. Uh, simple REST client, data visualization. So, these are the theoretical stuff which you can explore on our website and uh, this slides anyhow will be available on MODS website so from there also you can download and get the ideas about. So Android architecture, we know what are the major components in Android? <coughs> no, no, major components, I am talking about the components. Uh, Services, so then? Sorry? Right. Fourth? Right. <laughs> so, that's
that's clear. So see, it's a skill like someone else, so that's the library. So when you look at the Android platform architecture, you will get to know. And so key Android patterns, I guess expandable list view, intent service, content providers, content observers, SQLite database, sliding menus, and all those. So this is just a BB10 architectures, which you will find quite similar to your Android architecture. So views is there, data model is there. Just I'm focusing on data model stuff. Flat JSON files, REST client, and Sidebird servers, REST APIs. So how does it work? That models and applications you can find into our GitHub in native. I'm talking about this. So when you will go to our GitHub repository, there we have plenty of samples available related to each and every APIs. So for data model also we have a samples available which you can explore and understand. And how you can design. So the design as I said, for writing application logic you need to use your mind for uh, to do recording into C++. For uh, designing the US case, you have to go with the QML. So UI elements. So Android, XML plus Java, BB10, all QML. So in all QML also you can do that, entire application. So these are all the some uh, points which we would like to compare among the, and so these are all the APIs. And list view is there, list view is common for both, list view items, list, list item component, view page is there, segmented control. So let's see quickly, Android, uh, all right. Mm -hmm. No, no, it won't, uh, it's just to convert your APK files into the bar files. So the entire concern, obviously, under your APK files, the all code and non-code stuffs will be available, right? So that all will automatically get come, uh, come into this. So you could say wrapper, but it is not essentially uh, into the background when you look at. So when you will unzip the man, uh, your apk file you will get all those your uh, uh, dex files right and that is nothing that comes from your dot uh, class files so that all will be combined and forming a build file called apk and then you just go through this uh, android runtime tools availability that will convert into your pb10 build files no, so that you have to observe. You guys have to decide. So I will show you. So the same application which I have shown you to the simulators and I am running on my BB10 device. So do you find any performance difference? Look at this screen. So there are some similarities also which I will show you and which you have to observe very keen way. That is what you have to do. So, so this is the default, the lower portion which you are looking into. This is the default uh, uh, on touch your controller available because Android is uh, having most of the stack. So the stacks are uh, last in first out. So like you could say. So what did you the next screen is appearing on top. So we there we have a hardware functionalities back buttons available. But in BB10 it's not the case. We don't have a back button. So whatever the Android application which you are converting into the Android uh, Blackberry 10 platforms, then you will swipe up from the top. Is, by default, it comes up on the screen, but when you start over, this controller will come. So, which allow you to go to the previous screen. All right. So, I will show you with that all stuffs with the examples, some ca use cases. Uh, hmm. one, uh, one more question. Uh, yes, I'll get back to you. Still is yeah. Uh, I can take your question. Uh, Okay. I just wanted to have some data, like how many uh, BlackBerry B10, BB10 devices are there in uh, India, like sold last year? See, uh, none of the arguments, I don't know about my competitors' details, but uh, we have, a, like, we are not discussing about our sales details and all those things, because we are from the technical background, so, so that is a, so something you, if you want to figure it out before initiating any of your business model, so that is like is, uh, you have to go from the legal process. You mean, you understand what I mean, right? So NDA process and all those. So that we freely we can discuss and then after we will say. 
now this process what it will help you without putting additional efforts your existing stuff which you have already available and available on another stores that will bring into this so that will give you extra revenues and if it is a well quality apps so i will show you some use cases which is without adding additional efforts converted into the bb10 platforms and available on our stores and they are really doing very good job and if you look at it, but of course device does matters so device people are very fancy to buy it because it's not a limited one it's a global so suppose your app is a very fancy recently we have many applications for example the brand the big brand applications are also there so skype yeah so some of the applications which you are using that is supported to all the global devices so it's not only the specific region market when you are planning to roll out your model then obviously your thought should be like as it should get executed in well manner and i should earn as much as i can i can get a roi very well so let's uh, leave that business model probably we'll discuss this all stuffs in offline let me wrap up this technical stuff first so see i got this stuff wire file created and signed press next to proceed so what do we do just click on this next and normally it will generate your bar file the same location from where you were picking your apk file so it's available on my accelerator play dot bar file so this one i don't know whether you are able to see or not like this this is the bar file okay so network was the issues else it won't take more than 5 minutes if suppose your application is having enough memories and it waits more memories it will take some time now the challenge is how you will port this application into this device so as i said there are two ways one is your command line tools which you can download and by command lines you can do the rest of the exercise another one is ddb tools that tools i have i guess yes this one so what it do my device is not connected here i connected my device here it's fetching it's asking my device password and this screen is not coming clearly it's somewhere hidden because it's not getting fit there will be a scan option in there will be a scan to wait i forgot the ip address of my device so what i will do i will go here security and privacy development mode and this is my ip address 169 t54 01 by default okay this is device password so when you click on this connect it will there is this next process so it is scanning whether your device is connected so here all the details will come okay because of the device uh, uh, screen resolution it is not completely fit into the screen but it get now what i'll do i'll just click on this add and where i have generated the bar files accelerator here is the bar file right i'll take this and where it went right install so you know it get replaced because earlier i did via eclipse id now it get replaced done so yes chrome extension is also there right who said this yeah correct it's there so see how easy it is does it takes times no 
<laughs> of course, if your network is good, then it will. So, uh, slide stuff, so we will continue. So, before that, what I would like to show you, one gentleman has asked like this, some case study. So, I want to show you some case study which we have and available on store. So, the time center are called Ghana. When you talk about the performance, so you itself view and uh, find out. So, it is an Android app, ported on BB10 and available on our store. It should have a good download and revenues as well. So, some shown. One sec, I uh, will get back to you one second. Do we have sound for this? Right? That's it. Now, another case study is delight circle. So it's an accelerator, uh, not accelerator. I sorry, I wrongly told. It's augmented reality feature applications, which will help you to it's a like as a map and navigation based applications, which will help you to find out the spot which you are looking for nearby your location where you are living. If suppose I want to go somewhere restaurant or uh, to meet with my friends and host. So what I will do, I will simply go here. These are all features implemented into the Android. And the guys who has done this job, for them it just takes 10 minutes. And the download ratios and revenues which they are making via BB10 without putting additional fee. Because here signing keys and everything is all free. You don't have to pay a single pesa for that. So see here, these are the spot. So suppose you want to go new real treat somewhere, somewhere get 10% of discount. So if I will click on it, it is visible to everyone, right? See? So this is Android app, converted over. So now, I am running slightly short of time because a guy is showing me time. So I want to wrap up the stuffs very fastly. So data binding and data binding, these all are there. So the libraries, whatever you have, best way to make a compare the architecture platforms. That will give you a better sense. Because in Android architecture platform, if you look at and compare with the BB10 architecture platform, you will get a proper sense what all the common stuffs we have available. Uh, Another point which is very important that is API difference. If you have some application which you already done and it is uh, available on Google Play Market, the feature app, uh, you want to bring into the BB10 platforms by converting it. So, it will, the performance, of course, it to my extent and we got a very good review. There is no performance issues because uh, everywhere, if you will place your Android phones and BlackBerry phones, you will compare the performance, you will find the same experience. So, yep. Uh, all these BB10 apps, compatible apps, will they work on uh, uh, Q10 and uh, Z30? Exactly. Yeah, it was. Yes, it was. See, why? Because in when you are developing Android application, we have a split of le uh, folders, STPI, LDPI, MDPI, right? So that all is there. So when you are, if you, your application is architected very properly and designed and focused and uh, going to support the different form factor of devices. So obviously that kind of form factor automatically fit into the screen. So such kind of reasons you have to decide. So normally what is the, what is the Android application? and the APK file which we have ported and available on our store and uh, especially from our partners. They never complained like they found any difference and extra efforts into it. Some of the steps you have to do manually. For example, uh, your push notification steps, the GCM. So that you cannot put in because that is a different channel and this is a different channel. So some sort of instructions are available on our documentation guidelines 
which you need to look at before cre generating and creating a bar file. Before converting the process, you have to do that in your development side, especially into the Android environment and the coding side. So that is uh, basic things, not much for tough. And uh, now we have a BBM stuff and also invocation. Some of the restrictions are also there. So that all details I would really suggest should go to our documentation guidelines and explore so that uh, that will give you proper ideas. So yes, so this is a look and feel of Momentix ID. It's quite similar like as your Eclipse ID. And here also we have uh, some samples available, I guess, which you can explore. And also I suggest you should look at into our GitHub. There are also plenty of samples are there. So when you will download all those applications, then you can play. Here also the case is drag and drop. Only the thing is, when you drag this particular component, want to design the UI, you need to place into the code. So there are APIs differences. There is a page. Inside of you can design and place many containers. So that all similarities you have to understand. But when you will look at into the code, you will find out how, what are the process you have been done for XML, that declarable approach. The same things you were approaching here also in QML. So these are the standard samples available, which will help you a lot to understand, for example, settings, preference settings, and based on, based on the nature of the apps and choice, and your requirement of this. So we do have some standard videos available on Depth 2, Blackberry Day. So this is the links. So you probably you should go there and see the videos and understand how this all porting stuff is happening. So I am not going to talk much about it. So here you could see navigation on Android, that is stack process, home, conversation list, conversation details. Here you see this is the list and navigations in cascades. It is not a porting apps, it is a cascade. This is the tab. So in Android we have a tab on top and here we are putting into the ROM. Tab overflows, putting your app UX and UI. So these are the standard comparisons which is available on our deck. So I am not going to talk much about it into this. So you can do everything in native. Suppose you are a hardcore native developer and if you are having intention to bring uh, the same thoughts. So I have one good example. There is a guy who based out of Kerala, he did one application. He, through his application, he run, he, he controlled his car. So how he did, you know, how he got the ideas. He did that application, he found that application into the Android. He was using earlier uh, Android phones. So he got in touch with us and we people's help on him on technical front. We suggest them like this. See, that time, so that API was were not completely compatible with BB10. And I said, why you guys uh, want to do with this kind of thing? Since it's a standard approach and good model, probably you should go from the scratch. What he did, he understood the syntax, learned the ID, all concept, implemented into the native, the same cascade one. Believe me, that for him it took hardly one month. And then he were able to control this and he registered for the patent and everything. He got very good PER coverage from us. We helped him a lot, we promoted him a lot his applications and uh, he is now a famous guy. Most of you probably m m heard his name, Arvind Sanjeev. If not, then probably he, if someone who wants to get in touch with him, we will help you. So that kind of case study is there. If you have something available already in Android, if you want to bring and finding difficulties because of that API issues, if, the, till 4.2 there is no API issues. If you are finding worst case, then also you can apply your logic into the same Cascade app development and you can bring. So Android versus Cascade, these are the controls difference, how look and feel of the different controls are available in Android and uh, not customs, the default one <laughs> and Cascades. So this is the architecture of Cascades NDK. So as I said earlier, if you want to understand what all the similarities we have uh, with uh, Android platforms and this. We are much better because uh, we are having additional uh, platform supports. So some of the things you can find out from here. 
So clear absolute. These are the code difference. So XML versus QML. So this is the spinner X dot in, in XML code which you have written into the Android, right? Now user interface in Bibit your uh, Blackberry 10. So main dot QML. So this similarity will help you okay, how you can design the UI. And believe me, via QML itself, you can design, make your application. Somewhere, certain points, you when you have to write the logic. For example, a basic example I'm saying, login screen. To design login screen, keeping two text field, two levels, and one button is not a big deal. But only authenticated users should allow to go inside to and go to the next page. So for them, you have to write the logic. So where you will write that logic? You need to write that logic into the C++, right? Making sense? So that way. So these are pretty good comparisons. Spinners uh, and drop down. String down system. Model view list. How it looks in Android phone and in BB10. 10. 10 lines of QML code. And QML code is not that much tough. You simply have to drag and drop, and if you have something which you predefine and placing a, as a local folders, even you can read the little files in runtime. Also, you can control. So that all you can do. So models are samples dot xml, and just I bet some animation files. So sandbox is a, basically it will help you to do the exercise into the runtime. So suppose some things you want to add and you want to delete. That all will get reflected into your app when you are doing debugging and all those. Invocation framework, this is very interesting into the native app development. If you want to invoke your applications uh, and uh, framework, it should uh, with social network networking sites, so with VBM and all those files, access, and everything you can do. So, this is the life cycles. I hope you know, who are the Android developers, they must be aware with this Android life cycle because this is a basic thing before you start into the. So here uh, in BlackBerry 10 also we have a standard life cycle. This is active frames. Active frames is nothing. Whatever you are running here, it is busy being here. So suppose some other active frames. For example, if I am running this one, so simply I will. It looks like this. So this way. We have a case study for this guy. This guy, this application has been approved for BFB. If you look at into our BlackBerry stores, you will find this application evolved. And he is a guy, he is a core developer of Microsoft application development. And I just educated him uh, four hours maximum, not more than that. And you know, within three weeks, he has finished that application, uploaded it, and first shot itself, it got qualified for BFB. He understood and went through and explored a lot, all our documentation which is available on. So I'm saying it's not hard for the developers to switch from one platform to another platforms. Provided they have to understand the syntax ideas. Rest of all these samples are available already in our GitHub. So I'm skipping this all. Thank you. Do you have any question? Yes, I am a tutor. Same name. You can use a run widget at the rate run widget. Right. Momentix ID, right? Yeah. No. It will modify on your. So suppose if you are approaching whether Eclipse plugin stuff. Then you should, and there is a key point. One thing, when you are going with the cloud way, the solutions, cloud solutions, so what you need to do, if suppose you, once you converted the specific Android manifest file into the bar file, you cannot repeat the same APK file again. Because that information will store in our server due to security reasons. It should not be updated and uh, used by some third party. We are restricting that. So you need to go with the developer. Android manifest .xml, if you look at there, we have a version code. So version code you need to increment. That is your increment of your release. Right. So this is our work. 
So I done. Any other questions? No questions. Thanks. Thanks for attending the session. And uh, sorry, I uh, just so this is the announcement which I would like to uh, put over here. The BlackBerry Tent Game Contest which we are running, and uh, it is going to happen in Pune. So suppose if anyone is your you are a game developer who would like to participate into it, please go on. And uh, this is our website link. If you have it still out, we are available on our booth. Come there, we will help you on that front. And uh, if suppose uh, you are not a game developer, so someone who is in your network who knows, let them know about this contest. All right? Thank you. <laughs>